Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. How are you doing today? I hope you're having a great day so far. So I'm going to be reacting to a brand new video that Chris put up literally only four hours ago. I had planned to react to another video he had posted just a few days ago, talking about the whole dissociative identity disorder and explaining the differences between multiple personalities and dissociative identity disorder. But I scrapped that because I felt like that was a waste of time video. And I'll get into why in a second. But if you are new here, welcome. This is Journey to Find K and I'm K. I like to talk about mental health. I react to the rewired soul. But I do talk about other topics if I feel like we can learn a lesson about mental health and or substance abuse because I'm a mental health patient, worker, and advocate. And I want to use my experience and my opinion to negate some of the things that we do see out here in society and on this platform. So if you enjoy my content, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button down below. Hit the bell so that way you're also notified every time I post a video. And I do have a Patreon at patreon.com. Ready to find K. You can check out my different tiers, all the perks that go along with each one. But again, if not, you just liking, commenting, subscribing is support and I appreciate it either way. Yeah, I had a whole other video recorded um, reacting to Chris talking about the differences between dissociative identity disorder and multiple personality disorder because I did receive some comments under my last video I had posted on Monday reacting to the whole Trisha Paytas drama in his video where he's basically stigmatizing borderline personality disorder again and pushing it on Trisha Paytas, my opinion. And honestly, after reacting to it and then seeing that he had recently uploaded, I, I felt that, you know what, it could just get a little bit of a commentary and let's react to this new video with him supposedly wanting everyone to stop enabling Trisha Paytas because I feel like he's just gonna come off as a hypocrite. So with the other video, I felt like it was honestly just a waste of time. I felt like he was trying to capitalize off of the drama with Trisha Paytas claiming that she does have dissociative identity disorder. I did also see his video talking about that Padilla guy and him being held emotionally hostage. Um, and with that video, I did have issues because again, this is my own personal opinion, but I felt that he was still continuing the stigma that is attached with borderline personality disorder because again, he was attaching it to negativity. He was attaching it to Trisha Paytas having a whole rage on her social media, on her platform, which could be her trolling again. When it comes to Trisha Paytas, I don't trust her. And I feel like he is really taking advantage of her beha her behavior. And that is why I wanted to react to this video because I feel like he's going to be a hypocrite because I feel during those type of situations, these videos that he is making, he is enabling Trisha Paytas because he is giving her, he is capitalizing off of her behavior, which he knows if he puts her name in a title, if he states borderline personality disorder, he's going to get views. And, and, and as we see, he's getting back the subscribers that he had lost previously. And so that is why I wanted to react to this video because I want to see I want to see how is he going to tell somebody else to stop enabling her when he knows backhandedly he is doing the exact same thing. He is doing that. Him making these videos, he is enabling her to continue this behavior because she knows that people are going to react to them, which he does. And the way he does so is by continuing to label her with borderline personality disorder. In my opinion, is him continuing the negative stigma that's attached to it because now people are going to think, oh, people going off in a rage. Trisha Paytas is not the poster child for borderline personality disorder and I'm tired of it. So I want to see, what is he going to say? What is he going to say in this video for him to be like, hey, stop enabling her because you are enabling her by making this video. You're enabling her by giving her this attention. I shared, I, I told you guys in my last video, I didn't even want to address her because of the fact that I know that's what she wants. And as I shared in that video as well, as someone who does have a parent with that diagnosis, with DID, I could not sit down and just be quiet. I couldn't not address it. I didn't feel right not addressing it, so I did, but I also reacted to him as well because they were doing the same thing without even knowing it. So let's see what he has to say in this video. I'm going to go in here as open-minded as I possibly can. Maybe he's being genuine and he does have some, and if he has good points, I'm going to point them out. You guys know I have no issue with agreeing with him if he's correct or if it's something that I agree with him on, but I just feel like this is going to be very hypocritical. So let's just see if I'm right. I don't even give a f if people call me crazy. Like, if you're crazy too, like get over it. Like it's just, girl, bye. Look, Honestly, I don't even want to make these types of videos. Okay. But I think... I, starting the video out with a lie. Starting the video out with a lie. We starting good, aren't we? Trisha Paytas' recent video, Dissociate Did, mm. her tweet sums it up perfectly. 
I know people are telling us to ignore her or block her, but this is our job. I saw him retweet this. We can see our this. community being hurt. We see people we love giving up. We were supposed to protect you. We promised all of you a safe space. We promised you to make a difference. We have to stand up to this. This isn't about any one person or sim uh, system. Not us, not Trisha. This is about the fallout, how hard it is to get a diagnosis on information on people disbelieving DID. This is about seeing you being hurt without remorse and us saying no more. And that I agree with her. I agreed with her tweet. And the reason why I call Chris out is because as much as he swears to goodness, he's trying to help, he's also continuing to hurt another community, which is those who have borderline personality disorder as a diagnosis, because he continues to attach BPD to nothing but negative narratives that pop up on these platforms. I understand that drama sells. I understand that drama is what can get people to click, but he does it off of YouTube. He does it on all of his platforms, his blogs, in things he says on tweets. Like, this man has an issue with borderline personality disorder and that's why I called him out. You already know I have issues with Trisha Paytas and her whole thing with the DID. And that is because what she did, her behavior right there was trash. But him trying to say, oh, the reason why she has this trash behavior and we can have more empathy for her is because of her borderline personality disorder. When we don't even really know if she has legit borderline personality disorder, I think that also pushes another stigma. I really do. You, if you don't agree with me, let me know. But that's what I call him out for. And so, <laughs> So I want to make it very clear, I do agree with her tweets where it is calling people out and letting people know that this not this is not okay, this behavior is not okay, Trisha, this is not okay, we see you. And that is and that was ultimately what made me speak out as a person who has a parent who has this diagnosis. But I was also calling Chris out incidentally because he's not helping the situation as well. Because to me, in my personal opinion, he is continuing a stigma against another subset of the mental health community, which is those who have borderline personality disorder by continuously attaching it to negative narratives, negative, super negative drama, and especially a super negative person, which is Trisha Paytas. She's known for trolling and people question her diagnosis. People question whether or not it really is BPD. Is it bipolar? She takes it. She says she has this. She says she doesn't. You can't blame people for being skeptical. And because of that skepticism, I am not quick to say, oh, this is why she behaves this way is because of the borderline personality disorder. I can't do that because that to me is self-diagnosis and that can be dangerous because like I said prior, it pushes stigma with all that negativity. But on top of it, a lot of these symptoms cross pollinate. They go into different diagnoses as well. And that is why it's always recommended that you go see a medical professional. The reality is, is that a lot of this isn't going to stop with Trisha Paytas until people in her life stop enabling her. That's facts too. But then again, it's hard to take everything on the internet as face value. What's up, everybody? We have to this keep that in the back of our mind and be careful this? how we portray our message. Just because she's always putting this out there, do we know if that's for real? We're skeptical. We're skeptical when it comes to her. Problem, Maybe the people in her life really know that this is all just to get people's attention. They might call her out. We don't know focus on the solution and if you're new to my channel my channel is all about mental health so I use but it doesn't mean it's because she's bored on tips advice on things they could do for their mental health the things that work for me or the things that i learn about um but yeah sometimes i talk about what's going on in the community because stuff like this isn't cool when it comes to mental health but anyways if you're into that stuff make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell and i want to start this video off by saying like it's just sad man this whole thing's sad. Like, when I saw this video get sent to me, like, I, <laughs> seven and a half years ago, I'll put it this way, seven and a half years ago when I got sober, I had to do a fourth step. Some of you know what that is, but it's about your resentments. And you start to see patterns with the things that make you angry, upset, who you resent. And something that was in me that is still something that I struggle with is that I get resentful for other people, right? Like, I get upset for other people. Like, Trisha Paytas does not 
offend me. She does not bother me. But when it comes to the mental health community and empathy, (laughs) like like Dissociate did say, I can't just stand by and watch it happen. But like one of the reasons I feel bad, I feel bad for the LGBTQ community, right? Like when that was going down, when Trisha Paytas was claiming to be trans, and you know, you think you see my video? Emotionally manipulate everybody. Do you think you see my video? Y'all, let me know down in the comments below, because I said you should have felt bad then. I called about then. I said you should have felt bad then. You should have felt bad then. So now you telling me you felt bad? <laughs> like looking at it. Like, I, I could have done more. A lot of us could have done more. I know a lot of you did support the LGBTQ community when that happened. And I was supporting them from a distance, right? Like, I'm an ally of the LGBTQ community. But now I'm like, man, is this what it felt like? Is this what it felt like? Because it feels like a complete mockery, right? And I feel bad for the DID community. Like, watching Trisha Paytas' video just now, like, I was like... And I feel bad for the BPD community because you're constantly saying, this is an example of what that looks like. That's who I feel bad for as well. Sick to my stomach. Like, I couldn't imagine. Like, the the stuff that I... Especially when that's truly not the case all of the time. That is not the case all of the time. And I say all of the time because everyone is different and people's symptoms manifest different for each person because we're all individuals. But I will tell you, a lot of my favorite clients were people were those who were diagnosed with BPD. And that is where I understand having that understanding of the symptoms and how it manifests and stuff like that is helpful. So that way you are a, you are more prepared to have those type of relationships. But I'm not saying that they're bad relationships. I'm not saying that it's so hard, that it's so negative. That's why they behave this way. That's why they go into these rages. That's why this, this, and that. No, I'm not gonna do what he does. Each person that you may meet that has borderline personality disorder as a diagnosis are going to be different people. And it may you, they may have some symptoms that are the same. Some may show the same way. Some may not. I feel bad for that community because he is consistently giving a nothing but negative, nothing but a bad look to borderline personality disorder. Lewis, you know, I'm in recovery from addiction. I've struggled with anxiety and depression, um, traumatic childhood. And like, I can't imagine just watching somebody just completely make a mockery of it. But also which some some of you get, some of you don't, and I respect your feelings, but I also feel bad for Trisha Paytas. I feel really bad for her. Like, clearly she's not doing well and she needs help, all right? But like I said, towards the end of this video, I'm gonna- gonna I empathize. I empathize with her, like I will always say, I empathize with anyone who has mental health concerns that they are trying to take care of, but it doesn't excuse the behavior. And when it comes to a person who has a certain pattern of behavior, I will continue. I am not ashamed to say I'm skeptical as well, especially when it comes to someone who has a social media, who has a platform known for trolling or saying things to get attention, to behave a certain way, to get backlash. It has been proven time and time again that she doesn't care what type of backlash it is. She's proven time and time again that she doesn't care what type of attention she receives. If it's bad attention, good attention, it is straight up like Nikocado Avocado. It is like those two are looking at each other's playbooks. Let's continue to double down on our shitty behavior and continue to capitalize off of this attention. So, hey, if you, she really does have some mental health concerns that she truly takes care of in the background, I empathize with her because I know no matter what, the struggle isn't easy for anyone, period. But I will not sit here and say that I am naive enough to believe that what she puts on this platform is 100%. And that is truly what's going on. I empathize with you on what you may be struggling with behind the scenes, but what you're putting on this platform, I'm skeptical, is 100% real. And I literally wish she would just stop. Just stop. You might not might not like or agree with, but we're gonna talk a little bit about enabling. Okay, so I just wanna show a couple clips from her video, starting with this one. Tyranny definitely came out last week, last Friday, when I made the Instagram and the YouTube video to implement the DM. So listen, like Dissociate did said in that tweet that I read in the intro, this is a controversial diagnosis. This is 
one that people like disbelieve or think people are faking. You know, like as many of you know, I'm very into the science and I was communicating with a lot of you in the comments of a couple of my other videos and, you know, asking to point me in the direction of some research so I could educate myself more on this disorder, right? But one of the research studies that I read was talking about the controversy around this mental illness. And one of the reasons it's controversial is this fear. This fear that somebody will blame and alter for a certain behavior. And in that clip that I just showed you from Trisha Paytas, that's what she was doing, right? Like, imagine, imagine faking dissociative identity disorder, then screaming at another influencer and cussing them out, Anthony Padilla, right, for a 15 second Instagram story, and then blaming it on an altar. So like- It's just a no I, whole nother reason. Like this hurts my heart. It hurts my heart because I shared in my video on Monday that I have a parent with this diagnosis. I watched my parents switch altars in front of my face on multiple occasions and to think that Trisha Paytas has the audacity to sit here and fake the disorder, then behave trashily towards another person, and then to come back and try to excuse that behavior with her, <laughs> by blaming it on a fake alter. And all she can do is just sit here and hope that people will leave her alone because it's something we cannot prove. We cannot sit here and say without a benefit of a doubt that she does not have this disorder because we don't know her personally. We can only go off of her past behaviors, her patterns of behaviors that have us all sit here saying, Trisha, you need to sit the hell down and shut up. That's trash. I've seen the importance of my parents getting their treatment, taking care of their mental health daily what it looked like if they did not. I interacted with my parents' altars and know dang on well, they were not faking. And to have someone get on YouTube, get on YouTube with your millions of followers and make a mockery, to make a mockery of this diagnosis of mental health in general, as many times you have done on your platform is disgusting. And it tells me that Trisha Paytas is a disgusting person. I have empathy for your mental health and I hope you are getting the treatment that you truly deserve and may need. But your behavior that you're, she is showing on camera, her behavior on camera, I'm sorry, I keep switching tenses and who I'm talking to, but her behavior on camera is trash. And yes, I'm speaking personally and I'm also speaking professionally. I don't care. And I am so sorry for anyone offended by her behaviors. That is so, oh, making my nose itch, I'm annoyed. Empathize with Dissociate Did and the rest of the DID community because you have somebody out here like Trisha Paytas, like increase. Hold on, let me wash my hands. Okay, I'm back, I had to wash my hands. Sing that stigma. I think it's apparent if you've watched me for some time that I don't choose and he ain't free. He do the he does the same thing by pushing borderline personality disorder on this woman. He does the exact same thing, knowing dang well there's all this skepticism, and he tries to hide it under. Well, I really, I, you know, I don't want to doubt her, you know, because you don't know, we don't know. Like, he does the same thing with his borderline personality terrain. Right, we need to talk about this. So, here's here's something that bothers me. All right, so if you watched Anthony Padilla's video with Dissociate Did and a few other people from this community, like, you know, like Dissociate Did, like she had a switch, like right there. It is not this convenient thing, right? And here's what we need to remember about Trisha Paytas. Like, she has been on the H3 podcast for over an hour increments, right? She started her own podcast mm -hmm. without issues but now we're supposed to believe that all of a sudden when she decides that she wants to claim she has associative identity disorder now it's happening now it's something that she can't control you see what i mean and again i explained this in my last video like when we struggle with a lack of sense of self we get drawn towards different 
different identities because we don't have one. And I want people now, I just want people to understand. I do not believe that she has this diagnosis, but I'm saying that if she is, it is not too far fetched for someone to have this diagnosis to be able to be successful and possibly do a podcast or anything like that. I don't want it to sound like, oh, because you have DID, you're unable to do a podcast, you're unable to do this or that, which was kind of borderline right there when he said that. Oh, right. But we need to understand, and I keep saying this, and I talk this to my clients all the time in the rehab, right? Our mental health is our responsibility. Facts. It is not an excuse for these types of behaviors. Facts. Yes. Unless you want to use it to try to excuse why she acted a certain way, like borderline personality. And like things where they could switch and not know who that person was, whether you see that or someone else. Don't listen to the internet, the YouTube comments. You need to get help in order to deal with it. And I know how to deal with mine, and I've been diagnosed with traits of lots of things. I've said this multiple times. So that, that clip right there, it really upset me. So there's a few things that really upset me about what, what she just said. So one of them is she claims that she's getting help and she knows how to do it herself. Like, no, she doesn't. And like, I hope you guys take things away from my videos for your own sake. Like, we don't. Like, I've worked with thousands of drug addicts in my life, right? There's so much of this stuff that we cannot do on our own. We need help. And I mentioned this in another video. Trisha Paytas, like, she was doing better when she was actively going to therapy and talking about it and learning and practicing these things. And, like, although I don't know her, and this is completely speculation, but it seems like she's not doing anything, right? But at least but he said that this time. talks about trying to tell people, paying don't attention. be afraid to talk about your mental illness, don't be <laughs> That's very true, right? But in this context, my fear is that somebody with such a large platform is encouraging others to fake mental illness, right? And that is a major issue. And that is something that we all should care about. Facts. Influencers have power. I agree. Influencers influence. So do you. Right? Also, so stop pushing borderline personality disorder on every little negative thing that she does all the time. Just say that maybe call out her behaviors, call out how that isn't the diagnose. That's not how that diagnosis works. Don't sit here and continue to push a stigma against borderline personality disorder. That's what people, or at least I call you out on. I'm calling you out on the fact that you want to call her out for stigmatizing of mental illness, but you do the exact same thing on thing. I see the hypocrisy is already showing. It's showing in this video. Don't we like to think that we are just Pay attention to that. thinkers and nobody sways us or anything like that? Like, we will change our thoughts and behaviors based on what we're watching, based on what we're consuming. This happens when you are, you know, if you're growing up in a certain household, if you're in certain relationships, but modeling behavior is something that can happen when you watch specific influencers. And the last thing we need is for young people or vulnerable people to watch Trisha Paytas' videos and think this type of behavior is okay. So the last thing I wanna talk about is enabling. Like, <laughs> you know, I might get some crap for this, but when I watch this stuff going down with Trisha Paytas, it breaks my heart that she has people in her life that just enable and co-sign this stuff. And I wanna make it clear, it is none of their responsibilities to fix Trisha or have her not do certain things. They have no control over that. Facts. But what I see, like especially with her podcast, like every huge influencer she knows just flock to it, right? To help support her, because she does have good So you friends, know what that tells but... me? That tells me that the people that are around her are trash as well. <laughs> like, that's just what it tells me. And we have to remove that just because these people are sitting here getting on her podcast, that that means that those are her friends. Just because she calls them her friends does not mean that those are her real, legit friends. That does not mean those are people who have the rapport, who have the relationship, the ability to bring up these type of topics to Trisha Paytas. They could just be acquaintances we need to remind ourselves what those type what those titles actually mean what it really means to be a friend especially and i think a lot of times that gets muddled because of social media just because she has people on her podcast does not mean that they are her friends and but i will say the people who are her friends and who do know about her trolling behavior or do see that this is happening are trash as well that's it enabling somebody isn't a good friend like she had shane dawson on there she had rylan adams she had jeffree star 
Blair White, I won't get into that, but I will say this. I've had other influencers reached out to me, and they're like, I met Trisha before, and she was really nice, right? And I feel that that, and this is just my opinion, I feel that that is a manipulation of other people. You see what I mean? Like, she has this way of getting people to be on her side, and then just kind of look the other way when she does stuff like this. But again... Like, it's not Shane Dawson's responsibility. It's not he Jeffrey really Stone's don't responsibility like her or, he or anything her or like that. But I'll tell you this. Yeah, this- like, just like he said, those people, that does just because we see them on each other's platforms does not make them friends, does not make them friends. And though if they are really her friends, then that just tells me what type of person you are. And maybe makes more sense as to why I don't really enjoy your content either. This was one of my friends who was doing these types of things. I would have to love them from a distance, all right? I would have a talk with them and say, what you are doing, how you are behaving is not okay, and I love you, but I cannot be around you until you get help. And that's what I'm saying to you when you sit here and continue to push stigmas on certain mental health disorders, like borderline personality disorder. But you're not gonna listen because you think you're justified in. Because I cannot condone what you are doing. Right? Like, it was just last year when she offended the trans community, well, the entire LGBTQ community, and now the dissociative identity disorder community, as well as other people in the mental health community. And she just bounces from one to the next, right? Is it trolling? Is it for attention? I don't know. But the fact that people in her life are are not speaking up and not distancing themselves and we don't know for sure. It's not like we see her hanging out with Shane Dawson or Thank Jeffrey you. Star every single day. Are they really but friends? We do know for a fact that they continue to hang out with her, even when she doesn't apologize. Yeah. Or so that tells you what type help. of person they and are. Out why she's doing this in the first place. This is why I I advocate so much for therapy. Right. So much for therapy. Like get your butt in therapy and find out why you are doing the things yeah. that you're doing. I don't see no excuse That's for her to not do it. That's why I'm skeptical about her stuff. is figuring out how to not do those things that you are doing, all right? Like, that is the core of cognitive behavioral therapy. Mm-hmm. There's the cognition part, working on changing your thoughts and challenging your thoughts, right? Then there's the behavioral part, where you stop doing the bad behavior. I I don't I don't dislike people. I dislike behaviors. Facts. And the great thing about that is you can't change a person, but you can get that person or hope that that person gets help to change those behaviors. And I'll end with this. I am living proof. If you met me seven and a half years ago, I was the biggest scumbag you would ever meet. And now I'm a good father to my son. I'm a good boyfriend to my beautiful girlfriend. (laughs) Oh, we didn't get beautiful girlfriend Tristan though. To my parents, I'm a good friend. To my friends, I try to be good to all of you. Try Uh, and quit pushing stigmas on borderline personality disorder and other different type of disorders that you don't agree with or don't like. You're doing better. He is doing better about the psych meds though. So if a piece of garbage like me can work on myself, there is no excuse why somebody like Trisha Paytas can't really commit to therapy and and stop doing these toxic if this is legit that are just just really upsetting entire communities. Like it's just it's just brutal, man. But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. So yeah, that's it, you guys. I am excited that I reacted to this video because, you know, he did do a little bit of what I expected him to do. Um, I stated I was looking for some hypocrisy and I saw it when he said, stop enabling Trisha Paytas. I feel like in his own little way, he is doing that. I am doing that whenever we are talking about her, whenever we are, you know, making content about her, which is again, understandable because we want to bring awareness and call her out for it. But what he says is he doesn't enjoy making these types of videos but this is video number four so 
Um, I also saw the hypocrisy with him stating that, you know, oh, Trisha Paytas is sitting here doing this and she's pushing the stigma on the DID community and continuing the stigma on an already stigmatized mental health disorder. When he continuously does the same thing in his videos whenever he is talking about Trisha Paytas, he links about three of them right here where he's literally just saying BPD rage and borderline personality symptoms. That And it's always when she is doing something negative because that is basically his poster child that he uses for borderline personality disorder, which I don't agree with and which continues that negative stigma that is attached to it. And I don't like, so I feel like that was very hypocritical of him as well. I'm just gonna say it. I understand where he's coming from talking about the enabling. I feel like that should apply to those who are in her real life, who are her true friends, people who, for those people who do have that relationship with her, where you have that rapport that you know her, you, this is someone you can say, oh, I text her all the time, then what are you doing? If you are doing that and I, and she's continuing to do that, I applaud you, at least you're doing something about it. But I feel that the people that he named and stuff like that, we also have to remind ourselves, they could just be acquaintances. It's business transactions. It sucks that people do look at YouTube, look at these platforms as that way. But I see a lot of, a lot of these relationships I'm looking now on social media all the time play out as business transactions, as, hey, we're friends, and then you don't really see them hang out anymore. <laughs> like So um, that was one thing I wanted to point out. And I I also wanted to make sure people understand that just because a person might be diagnosed with DID does not mean they can't have a successful podcast or anything like that because there are, I don't want to offend anyone. I hope I'm not saying it incorrectly, but there is a way that you can, if you're doing your treatment and, you know, doing your therapy and stuff like that, you can end up in some sort of like, I guess, recovery when it comes to the um, that actual diagnoses. Um, so I don't want anyone to feel like just because you have DID, you wouldn't be able to have a podcast. You wouldn't be able to do that. And again, I'm not saying Trish Paytas does have that, but it kind of felt like you could take it that way from what he stated in his video. So now I want to hear from you guys. Let me know down below. What do you guys think of this whole video that he posted? What are your thoughts and feelings on the things that he stated and what the, on the things that I stated? If you agree with me, don't agree with me, let me know in the comments down below. If you've made it this far and haven't subscribed, don't be afraid to hit the subscribe button before you leave. Hit the thumbs up, hit the bell to stay notified every time I post a video. You can check me out on patreon.com, Journey to Find K. Check out my different tiers and perks. New video is expected to go up over there this weekend for you guys who are my patrons. Um, but I do appreciate you guys so much for stopping by during this time, watching me, spending some time with me, hearing me rant, hear me go off <laughs> during this video. I want everyone to stay safe. I hope everyone is doing whatever they can to stay mentally and physically healthy. And I thank you guys for stopping by watching me, hopefully enjoying this video during these times. Just remember to wash your hands frequently, follow the guidelines that are plastered all over the place to help stop spread this whole virus. But I thank you for taking your time off to chill with me for a little bit, try to distract yourselves from what's going on outside by spending some time with me. I thank you guys so much. I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye.